again. By the way, if you have questions, uh, you can ask anytime. Here I'm just going to use a div, so that canvas thing is uh, is extra for you guys. We might use it again next week, but uh, it's kind of a rudimentary way of, of displaying things. Still, we will use maps and other other stuff later on. to work, no errors, and the name is different, very important. Um, yeah, so let's see how we get the geolocation. I actually don't remember this almost. Yeah, but anyway, so this one is also able to, you, you're also able to get the geolocation. Um, similarly has how we got the accelerometer information with this new HTML5 uh, objects there. So let's start with an object that will contain this, uh, this geolocation. I initialize it to null at the beginning and now we are going to check if it is possible to get this information. So it may be that your device is not capable of getting location. So we need to check, is it uh, possible to do that? It's not mandatory to do it because before I didn't check if I can get the accelerometer from the, from the computer and it still kind of worked. But this is good practice and uh, I have now a bit of time to, to show it and we do it now. So this test uh, ensures that we can get, uh, that we have access to the geolocation, so we can initialize the geolocation with something from this HTML5 that gives us the geolocation. And now if we have the uh, geolocation existing and it's not null, so we, we have a success. Maybe we can prepare also an else here, but I'm not going to, to cover it. So that would mean give a warning to the user. If we have the access, then we are going to get the current position. So. And again, this is going to be another callback function, like before. Let's call it unlocation update. So we have to write now this function, onLocation update. And yes, and this event is again going to contain um, the information that we want to display. And it will look very similar to the output from before. So let's just call it let's call it div this time and say um, I think we called it output here. Yes. So in this div we are going to put the again the properties of this event. So 
I'm actually going to go back and uh, copy this code so I don't write it again. So the properties of this event are going to go into this div. Save the file, refresh, OK. No error. Again, some time the timestamp that goes on and on, but this coordinates. Um, this means it's an array, and the properties of this of this uh, of these coordinates object. Uh, okay, there is no pretty printing of this array contents. So I will explain what what that means. I'm going to uh, use another another tool from the browser to inspect the uh, properties of this event. You can actually log the properties of this event to the console. So that means that when I refresh here, I'm going to get a print here in the console with basically the same information, but here I have the possibility to inspect these these properties of this array so here this printing is just not good enough so I am getting some latitude and longitude they are the values that uh, you can use to, um, to to identify your location on the earth but how am I getting this because I have this this laptop here it doesn't have GPS hmm? what? Wi-Fi, probably. It can be Wi-Fi, it can even be uh, IP-based. So when you have IPs given to, to different uh, computers, the source of that uh, distributor has a location. Uh, I have to say that you will ask me, how does my phone get the location? And I actually don't know. So the way that the phone gives you the location is a black box nowadays. I had experience with these uh, Symbian phones, these, um, these uh, Nokia phones, before these smartphones became popular. And there you had to ask, okay, give me location from the cell tower, give me location from the Wi-Fi, give me location from the GPS. And then you could decide, okay, now I want to use this or that. But with these current ones, it's just give me the location. Thank you. I don't know how it's going to do it. It's going to try to optimize battery usage, uh, accuracy. You could give it some kind of parameters, like I really, really want very accurate information, but you still don't know if it's going to come from GPS or something else. So it's a, it's a black box nowadays on everything, Android, iPhone, and Windows phones, if you use those. Okay, so the coordinates, uh, if you want to display them, you have to look somewhere else um, in this chords object. So let's look there and say properties latitude event chords. Okay, latitude. Now I'm going to teach you two ways of addressing these, this thing. Uh, I'm going to add here also this BR, and instead of writing here that latitude, I'm going to write longitude, but in a different way. So in JavaScript you can access the array properties in, in both of these ways. Okay. And I'm not going to use this anymore. Of course, I could print still the timestamp, but I'm not that interested to show that value. Okay, and refreshing gives me something here. Now, I'm going to go on the mobile phone and open this same Yeah. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. So 
I'm standing here on the same chair, but the numbers are not the same. So the difference is here. This one after the eight, here is a three. And of course, everything after that. This phone is probably getting the location from something else than my laptop is at the moment. It could be the Wi-Fi that I'm connected to, or it might actually use uh, uh, the cell towers or something else. I'm not sure what it's doing, but it is using something else than, uh, than the computer, otherwise I would have the same numbers there. Okay. Um, I will teach you one more thing because you might need it and we have time so this is how you get the location when you call that function but it's not going to update your location so let's say that you want to make a tracking app uh, an app where you want to record your location every every time it changes basically so i already have the function that records it this on location update it it records it on the screen, but it records it nonetheless. Uh, and I'm going to update the code so that it updates this value as the location is going to change. So to do that, instead of just calling this get current position, you can call watch position. I will give it the same function. And that's it. <laughs> so, with this update, it should um, also update the position as it changes. And because I can't really debug this uh, this now, I can't go outside and change my location. Uh, I'm going to use uh, an app that I downloaded from the Android Marketplace it is called I mean from the Google Play Store sorry uh, it's called yeah it's called um, GPS joystick and it basically looks like this. So I loaded the page again, and this joystick thing is actually moving my location. It's making a fake location for my for my phone, and it's moving it in some direction with walking speed. I can uh, modify the speed from these bottom buttons. So walking, running. I don't know what the last one is. <coughs> yeah, anyway, it it helps if you plan to build these kind of location-based applications if you don't want to debug every time by going outside and, and running. <coughs> 